Once again, it's a joy to come here and share uh, God's Word and to see all brothers and sisters over here. You know, we count you as another second family. Uh, we live on the other side of the town, in the east side, and it's nice to be here and uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Dr. Kishore, and uh, he asked me if I could come and speak, and I'm really thankful for every opportunity I get to speak God's Word, and um, it's a joy to see uh, all, all you brothers over here, some of, the, some of the brothers from the last time I don't see, and uh, so many of them I recognize and know, and uh, really thankful for the children, you know, they do a great job, you know, children, the seeds, as Brother Praveen said, the seeds that we are planting into the lives of these children are so powerful, so eternal. You know, what we have to give to our children is two things. My father um, had a very uh, precise thing about it. One is give the faith, faith in Lord Jesus Christ. That's so important. Tell them that's the most precious, that's the most valuable thing. Other is give, it, give them that discipline. You know, when you give them faith and discipline, you don't have to give them anything else. They will be they will be successful in every area God has called them to. I have my wife and uh, uh, my children today over here, Daisy and uh, children are here, and uh, Hannah and Joseph. We have another son, Benjamin, and um, keep him in also in prayers. And uh, I have my brother in ministry, Brother Pat, who is my companion in ministry. Uh, like Paul had a companion, Dr. Luke, I have a, a brother, he's uh, uh, yeah, I, I call him the media missionary, and um, we've been able to reach um, 186 nations of the world. We started with the purpose of reaching people in greater Pittsburgh. We did not know what God had in store, and today it's growing, and um, it's all for the glory of God because it is all about Jesus. It's all about the gospel. It is about how we can tell the truth because that's the greatest message. That's the most important thing everyone has to hear at this time we welcome all those who watch us across the nations of the world in the name of the lord and um, today we will turn to the gospel of matthew chapter 24 if you have your bibles and verse 14 matthew the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 this is how the scripture says and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world to a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let us pray. Holy God, help me to speak your word. Your word is true, alive, forevermore, that is, never changes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling me into your service. Lord, what an honor and privilege to serve you, Lord. Lord, I'm not worthy to stand here, but you counted me worthy, Lord. You qualified the call, Lord. It is not anything good in us, but it was all your goodness, Lord. Lord, tonight, give us and bless us with your word. Holy Spirit, take charge of my tongue. Take charge of my heart and mind. Bind every powers of darkness. Holy Spirit, take charge of everything. May, the, may, may only those words you desire may come from my mouth. Give you all the praise and the honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today what I'm going to preach is about the gospel of the kingdom. And um, uh, when, when Dr. Kishore um, texted me and asked me if I could come, first I had to get into some of the logistics I had to take care of. And then, uh, then I asked the Lord, uh, Lord, what should I preach and what should I speak? And um, I prayed about it. I debated about it. And the Holy Spirit said, this is what you're going to preach. And uh, uh, I kind of uh, even debated this morning, Lord, uh, maybe you have something else to speak to your people. But uh, the Lord said, no, 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 no. The more I started debating in my heart, the more it got so clearer and clearer in my heart that the Holy Spirit wants me to speak this word. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations 
and then shall the end come. The Matthew Gospel written by the disciple of Jesus, Matthew, who was a tax collector and who had a wonderful calling. And uh, the Bible says that he was at the tax collecting booth and uh, Jesus uh, met him and Jesus said, uh, follow me and immediately the Bible says is uh, there was not even an afterthought Matthew had and he immediately followed you know we being uh, you know I was pondering over that and I was thinking about it and this came to my mind probably Matthew had a family and uh, to make such a quick decision uh, was uh, powerful and God is faithful you know I really thank the Lord for God to call me into his glorious ministry and um, I never thought uh, that this will happen in such a miraculous and dramatic way that the Lord will call me though I had a desire but I did not know how it will happen when there is a call upon our lives God will have a way to get us so Matthew gospel is about uh, Jesus presenting Jesus as the king of Jews it is a kingdom uh, God Gospel. It is a gospel that is written to the Jewish community basically because they were looking for a king and uh and they were looking in, in the Messiah that uh, he will be seated on the throne of David. However, you know, they could not see, uh, the, they could, they could, their, their eyes were blinded, they could not see that, and uh, they could not recognize that. You know, when Peter says, had they known him, the Lord of glory, they would have not crucified him. But the Bible says in, again in Zechariah, those who pierced him shall mourn as they see him when he appears. Today, tonight, what uh, the Lord has laid on my heart is to preach uh, on the gospel of the kingdom and the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom and uh, Matthew says uh, that once this is pre and Jesus said uh, that uh, once this message is preached then the end will come Jesus was seated uh, in the Mount of Olives uh, and as he sat over there the disciples started asking him master when these things shall be and what are the signs of it and Jesus started giving a discourse it is uh, the theologians call it it, uh, the Olivet Discourse. There are some of the discourses Jesus had in the Bible. One discourse is called the Discourse of the Sermon on the Mount. The another one is the Olivet Discourse. Another one is the Discourse with Nicodemus and one with the Samaritan woman. These are some of the some very powerful discourses uh, um, Jesus had. And Olivet Discourse or the, the Discourse Jesus had on the Mount of Olives is uh, very unique and very special because Jesus kind of unravels about the the end of the age you know we have to always put in perspective that Jesus is coming back very soon we, a Christian should live with that mindset when in the revelation it, re, it, it we read over there like this uh, that uh, you know blessed is his coming and uh, come Lord Jesus you know amen come Lord Jesus that should be the mindset we live in this world but this is not our our tabernacle we don't have tabernacle over here we are like pilgrims our so uh, we are on a sojourning Abraham was looking for a, a for a city whose maker and builder is God so Jesus is talking that not one stone upon another stone shall be left and this all shall fall down this all shall come down and he's talking about all the things that are happening so the context of all this was in relation to to the end of the age you know we in the in the in the in the in the, in the study of the theology it is called eschatology the word eschatos is a Greek word which means last and logi means the study of last things or the last days and we should always make every effort to study about the last days where in, in Revelation it says blessed is the man who reads these words who's, who, 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 who studies this word is so important so Jesus is talking about the gospel of the kingdom why the gospel is what I wanted to share with you what is this gospel of the kingdom and that gospel is the most important thing that we need to know in Greek the word gospel is called Yuang on or it means the good news in a world that we are living with filled with so much bad news out there gospel is the good news and many a times we are guilty of trivializing the gospel because this is very powerful because in the middle of all the chaos and in the middle of all the challenges and all kinds of turmoil and turbulence this world is going through this gospel is the only hope for humanity 
And what is this gospel is what we are going to look into. The gospel of the kingdom, we need to understand what is the meaning of the gospel. It is the good news. It is a news that, is, uh, that, is, that all humanity has to hear. And th- what is the message of this gospel? This message of this gospel is not of the wisdom of words, but it is the actual person of Jesus Christ, his life on this earth, his coming on this earth, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his second coming. Hallelujah. We need to always talk about Jesus coming back very soon. It is so important to let the world know that Jesus is coming back very soon. See, the thing is, we need to understand that Bible, everything that is written in the Bible is accurate and it is fulfilled. And it comes to fulfillment and everything that is left over to be fulfilled fulfilled is the last days or the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the events that happen towards the end. So this gospel, so Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. So he's talking about a kingdom, he's talking about this gospel and he's saying that, that Jesus started preaching this gospel. So we see in the, in the book of Matthew and in, even in the Luke and, other, and the book of Mark, we see that Jesus started preaching this gospel of the kingdom. Repent and repent at hand for the, for Jesus, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, it is so, 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 so interesting that the Holy Spirit led our brother Praveen to you know, talk about the kingdom of God. You know, that is the most important message that everyone needs to hear is about God's kingdom. It is the dominion of God. Of God. See, this, this world's kingdom or this dominion was lost after man fell in sin. So Jesus has taken over the kingdom. However, the, the ultimate culmination or the ultimate consummation only happens in the second coming event. Because we have not been glorified. So this message is a message of hope that there is a life after this life. There is a blessed hope after this life. And that message needs to be trumpeted at the top of our voice everywhere we go. We need to to share the message of the gospel everywhere we go. Because gospel has power. This gospel is not a a kind of an ethical story or a philosophy. This gospel is about Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel is about what Jesus did on the cross and shed his last drop of blood. And through that we have forgiveness and we have entrance into his presence. Mind you, we need to understand the gravity of this gospel in the light of the judgment of God. What I mean to say over here is, let me, let me make it more simple, is that those who deny Jesus, those who say that they don't want to follow Jesus, they are heading towards an eternal destruction, a hell and a lake of fire where there is no coming back. Let's be honest about it. Let's not play, let's not compromise on that. That is, because the thing is, Christ is an offense to everyone. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There are people out there they say there are many ways. I'm sorry to say with out of great love and sincerity there is only one way and that is the way of Jesus Christ. Narrow narrow is a way that leads to righteousness but there is a broad path. Hallelujah. For my name's sake you shall be offended of many people. So this gospel of this kingdom, this message Jesus started preaching. So it is about the real person of Jesus Christ. And the means of this gospel has two sides to it. It is not just a message. Message. It's not just saying that Jesus came into the world and shed his last drop. And, and whoever believes in him will, will, will believe on him, shall not perish and have everlasting life. And will have, not only that, but there is a demonstration also. See, Jesus taught the word and then Jesus did miracles. What I mean to say over here is his ministry is tangible to be seen by the world. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm not preaching this message to entice people or to manipulate people. What I am coming to you is in the power of God so that your wisdom, so that you are not resting on the wisdom of man. 
He was writing in a time when there was a lot of Greek scholars and these wise people and a lot of debates. But the thing is, gospel is about evidence both inside and outside. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus comes into your life, one is that he cleans us up inside out because this heart is deceitful there is so much corruption and wickedness out of the abundance of heart mouth speaks jesus said and where your heart there's where your treasure is and jesus comes into this heart and sets and transforms a person's life that is the power of the gospel now what happens is you don't think the way you used to think you don't do the things that you used to do you don't speak the way you used to speak now there is a total transformation there, there is an inward seal of his work you know we have been sealed by the holy spirit as paul says in ephesians now there is an outward manifestation also for the world to see hallelujah and that is what the gospel is i mean there's a real witness you know when jesus says i love you it is a real love it is not not emotion it is not trying to make you feel good it is real it is it it can be seen hallelujah as much as it is spiritual jesus work is tangible to be seen for the world hallelujah and that witness is going to be presented and then the end is coming so this gospel of so what happens is jesus taught his taught the word he preached the word and then he manifested in signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to challenge anybody in this room struggling with any kind of sickness or any situation. I want to say with all honesty and sincerity, my God is able to touch you, heal you, set you free from whatever you are going through. Because what I am preaching is not about me. It is about my Savior, my Lord. Hallelujah. And that's a sign to you and to the people out there that there is a, that's a living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is all about him and it's all about his name. Hallelujah. These miracles are not about us. It is about Jesus. We want to point you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because in him is life and life eternal. Hallelujah. There are scores of stories how Jesus has touched people's life and how he has transformed them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have personally seen in my life, in my ministry, that how God has proven himself time after time after time through his miraculous power over people's lives. Last year, this dear um, sister of ours in the church met with a terrible accident with 18 broken bones. Her rib was broken uh, and, and, and all these lips were, ribs were puncturing the lungs. Her hands and feet were broken and uh, mind you, there was not even one part in the body, there was not an injury. And we, I went to the UPMC Presbyterian Hospital and this woman is four times double the size, all swollen over. The doctor said, forget about doing a surgery. E even if we can get her blood pressures up, that would be great. We don't see a hope in this woman. You know, it was like a challenge to me because a year before she, she came to, to us and the Lord spoke to me and told, to, told her, sister, you're going to write a book. And actually she wrote a book and that book was released the day on which she met this accident. Her book's name is From, Star, From Scars to Star. You know, my wife said that she will not end in scars, she will end in star. And I, when, I, when I heard this, it was a challenge for me. It was not just about that healing, but it was about the name of the Lord. Oh God, you did this miraculous thing in this woman's life. Now she is lying there in the Presbyterian hospital, left to die. What are you going to do about this? The Lord said, spoke through the word of God, through Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 5, where it says, as the way of the wind is, wherever it pleases to go. And that's how bones grow in the womb of a woman. So are my ways who makes all. Lord said to me, I was sitting at my office his desk God said I will make all the word make in the Hebrew means I am going to recreate Lord told me son watch I am going to recreate this woman for the glory of God and to make the world ashamed hallelujah some of you if you want to watch what God did you can look upon our YouTube and I am interviewing this woman after she met with this accident brother Pat was uh, recording it it is there in our YouTube's what I want to tell you is 
what we are giving to the world is not a bunch of stories or some philosophies or some 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 mystery or some old wife's fable no we are presenting to you the real person of jesus that changes life hallelujah oh glory to god this year beginning of this year we we met at uh, at this uh, uh, one of the one of the churches over here in allison park praying for the korean reconciliation and we were praying you know we were around maybe 60 70 people holding our hands and praying that lord oh, lord do something miraculous and right after you know this group of brothers and sisters we all i was also there we prayed that we had this meeting of uh, president trump and king john un I want to tell you the power that the church carries is more than the power of all these world leaders out there I wish the church understood that for the Bible says in Ephesians that Jesus has been seated far above powers thrones and principalities and and then he has given it to the church where the head is that's where the body is the church and we are seated with him which means everything is under our feet hallelujah I wish we got a handle of this truth you know many times we act as if we are nothing and nobody that's okay humility is a good part you know I, I like that but at the same time it's not at the at the expense of the fact that if you don't know the truth you should not be ignorant of that fact so this gospel is real there is something for the world to see the disciples you know raised this man for 40 years who was who, who was lame at the beautiful at the beautiful gate at the temple this is what the religious leaders of that time said now a notable miracle has happened we just cannot say anything about it that's what the gospel does it silences every mouth like the mouth of daniel of the lion was silenced in the den same way god is going to silence everything that rises against god's word so there is a means of the gospel and there is the might of the gospel what is the might of the gospel it says paul says for i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of God oh my goodness oh really oh it is the power of God what kind of power all oh, powerful power which means every power in this world and the world to come is under this power of God that is the gospel hallelujah glory to God a child of God who knows this truth oh no one can stand against that's why that's why when paul writes to the romans he says if god is for us who can be against us hallelujah he who spared not his own son gave all you know when we pay attention to all these words you know the word all means father paupered himself he emptied everything that you could possibly imagine to win you and me that much precious you are he is he's wooing you back to him hallelujah so there is a might of the gospel which is the power of god first unto the jews then to the greek then paul says through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the holy spirit you know these witnesses were manifested hallelujah Paul talks about his, uh, his missionary journey in the book of Romans and uh, then he talks about how in Ephesus when he was teaching in the school of Tyrannus for two years and after that Paul, the Bible says in Acts 19 Paul wrought special miracles you know what happened that all the curious artworks of the temple of Diana and all those who did magical inc incantations started becoming Christ followers that is the power of the gospel hallelujah can we believe tonight that through your prayer and through the preaching of the word that people will be drawn to Christ the answer to the problem of this nation or any nation of the world is not about the gun laws or anything but it is that the church needs to stand like the light when you stand like the light darkness is dispelled hallelujah because you carry the power of god that's why paul says in this in this earthen vessels is the excellency of his treasure or not of us but of god hallelujah that's the might of the gospel what is the majesty of this gospel now unto him this that is of the power to establish you according to my gospel the preaching of the gospel of jesus christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept as a secret this was a mystery 
you know in the time past before Jesus came oh saints of God they were looking for this mystery but it was revealed to us we should be so grateful every day when we wake up in the morning for Jesus oh for us hallelujah every day live with this mindset that gospel is so fresh as if yesterday you were going to go into that hell that irreversible place but Jesus died for you oh he shed his last drop of blood where you were to be nailed there he was nailed church I'm not even being able to explain everything it's not even coming close to it he died destroyed the work of the devil and he redeemed you he purchased you and brought you into his family he redeemed you he brought you from his family And then what he did is he 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 justified you just as if you have not sinned. Oh my goodness. Is that gospel that good, too good to be true? Absolutely. Because the God you serve is too good to be true. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we don't even get an eye out of it in this lifetime. Only when we shall see Him. Hallelujah. Not only we shall see Him, we shall become like Him. Hallelujah. What a God you serve. You know which God I'm talking about? The God of the universe. For whom the nations lie are like a drop of a bucket. For Him, islands are like fine sands. For whom judges of supreme court and vanity that's the God I am talking about no other God the God who upholds everything by the word of his power hallelujah that God yes that God who spoke and the world came into being hallelujah I'm talking about that God when you open your Bible and read he's sitting next to you there's only one book in the Bible book in, in the world where the author is sitting with you you may buy any kind of in any number of books the author is not sitting next to you this is the only book where the author is sitting with you the god of the universe he is speaking to you through his holy spirit hallelujah So what is the mandate of the gospel? Is to go and preach the gospel, hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Devil is a liar. He doesn't want you to open your mouth. You know, we don't need special degrees. You know, it is good if we can get a degree. That's okay. But if you don't have, that's fine. Go and tell the gospel to everybody. You know, a couple of weeks back, we were, I was in Home Depot. And this lady started talking to me. She thought, uh, I was from some other sect or other religion or some other kind of faith. I said, no, I'm a believer. I got this opportunity. I started preaching the word. She looked at me and said, oh, are you not scared? I said, scared for whom? For what? Oh, somebody will come. I said, I don't care because God is on my side. Who will be against me? Oh, please, for 10 minutes. One day I was at JC Penney to buy a curtain rod. And this lady says, oh, your name is so nice. I said, wait, 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 wait. Let me say something about this. I started preaching from Romans, Romans 4 for 15 minutes over there. Oh, why should we fear? Whom to fear? Hallelujah, God is on your side. So the mandate is to preach the gospel to everyone because when they hear the word, oh, darkness is being dispelled from their life. This is the eternal seed of the word that will bring forth fruit. Your job is to plant the seed. Holy Spirit will take care of the the, the conversion and the conviction. Hallelujah. Church. Don't shut your mouth. In your workplaces, be a witness for Jesus. Hallelujah. Start praying for people. Start believing for miracles. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let me be a witness. Not only through the preaching of the word, but through your work also, Lord. Let my work show Jesus. Hallelujah. Let them see who I am. Hallelujah. For the glory of God. And when they ask, I will tell, it's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish... If we all had a kingdom mentality, I wish if we all had the gospel mentality, oh, no force, no power can stand. You know, when all these crises happens, all that, all that we need is a group of brothers and sisters who can get on their knees and start praying. If things have to change in the Senate and in the Congress, will not happen by some law. It will happen when somebody starts praying on their knee over here. Hallelujah. That's the power you carry. Because the moment you open your mouth, what happens is you connect with eternity. 
You connect with the heavenly host and the whole host of heaven is at your aid. My brothers and sisters, your assignment may be to take care of your family and have a job, but there is a greater assignment, a glorious ministry of Lord Jesus Christ to pull somebody out of darkness into the light. I tell you, I was a man who was chasing after wealth. No no offenses to anybody over here. You know, when I see the joy, when prayers are answered, when I see somebody set free, oh my goodness. Oh, I say that's my wages. That's priceless. Thank you, Jesus, for calling a, a person like me who is not worthy to stand and hold this word and preach to see this miraculous thing. A couple of years back at our church in, SM, in Monroeville, we were going to have this healing service. And we were, have, we were all circled around in a prayer chapel. And we were all praying. All of a sudden, I felt like this in my spirit to look at somebody, a sister over there and said, I can see God is setting free your son from whatever bondage he is. She started weeping. I did not ask anything much about it. You know, my job is to be a postman, just to deliver it. Lord will take care of the rest of the thing. I don't have to worry about it. Just do the job. Oh, Mary said, do what he says. The water will turn into wine. Bring the loaves to Jesus. It will multiply. Hallelujah. Two years later, yesterday, two, uh, two days back, this son who was in drugs for 11 years, was sitting next to me, besides me. And we were doing an interview, study on how you can be set free from drug addiction. Hallelujah. That's priceless. That happened on November 12, 2016. November 8, I'm sitting beside this, this, this dear brother, this son of this sister. Hallelujah. That is priceless. Go and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So, I'm going, going, going more further because I don't have, to, uh, I don't, I don't want to waste, waste. I don't want to go more, more into it. Um, but what does Paul say? Paul says he had God had separated him to be a minister of the gospel, and then it's, he says that whatever happened for me was for the furtherance of the gospel. Hallelujah! Paul is in chain, and he's saying it is for the furtherance of the gospel. I know a man of God from India, he was falsely accused recently and put in jail for false reasons. You know, he came out of the jail after three months and uh, he was sharing the story. He was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that person who falsely accused me and, pu- and made me to put me in the jail because in the jail, I was able to share the gospel to the people who were on death rows. Hallelujah. Just imagine. Somebody who's going to die and go to hell is now going to be with Jesus. He baptized 100 people in that jail. Police officers got saved. We will suffer, brother said, we will suffer. That's okay. Little suffering will be there. This world is a fallen world. There are challenges. Trials are there. Hallelujah. Body has not been glorified. That's okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all the challenges. One day I'm at Children's Hospital. I'm not feeling really good that day. I'm saying, Lord, I'm not really happy today. I'm not feeling good. I'm really upset. I'm going to grab my coffee. And uh, this nurse just crosses over. He says, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't remember you. And then she started telling me that uh, I was there in that room. And uh, you came and prayed for me. Yeah, this woman was challenging me. She was kind of doing pity party with me. Uh, in the previous meeting and she was kind of trying to you know sympathize too much I said I don't need your sympathy thank you because you need prayer I said I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus and God is going to set your situation free she said yes I need prayer I said what is your what is your need she said my son Craig who was in military now has become a heroin addict addict and is now on PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome. I said, I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus and this is going to be a witness because you have challenged and I'm, going, I'm telling you, your son is going to be set free for the glory of God. Nine months later, when I'm upset, you know, 
this lady says after you prayed for my son Jesus appeared to my son Craig in a vision and said this was Lucifer that brought this drug addiction and he was immediately set free three months later again I met this woman 12 months clean hallelujah I have been through my share of trials and challenges yes God is setting me free yes things are changing miracle is on the way but hallelujah it is for the furtherance of the gospel somebody's life was touched hallelujah I said thank you Jesus thank you Lord I don't get everything when I go through all this the Lord said son yes you don't know everything just follow in my path hallelujah four weeks back this brother came to me he was very disappointed for the last three years he's been writing his physiotherapy exam and he's failing six times he has wrote and one day as I'm ministering I felt so much you know in my spirit like a stubborn faith I said Lord I have to see this I said somebody get me a piece of paper let me write in the name of Jesus you will pass this exam in the name of Jesus this is got to happen not may happen will happen hallelujah when the day of his result was coming he was saying pastor I may fail I said no you will pass hallelujah it is not about passing a license and getting a job no it is for the glory of God hallelujah so that the world will know who my Jesus is hallelujah that is the power of the gospel hallelujah because this is real this is this is tangible you know what that's why John says we have touched we have felt we have seen the word of life hallelujah that's what we are presenting to you hallelujah church don't take my Jesus lightly he's the same yesterday today and forever if something is dead in your life start speaking over son of man here are the dry bones you know it Lord prophesy something dead you know I was uh, uh, yeah another one this uh, uh, young lady I have a I have a friend of mine we pray every Thursday and his friend sister 21 years old and uh, has a lung issue she may die we prayed and God did a miraculous thing she got a lung transplant another one got another miracle she had these scar tissues and God is miraculously healing you know he, now he brought me another miracle another another situation where this lady has blood cancer she will die I said the doctor said there is no hope I said praise the Lord hallelujah if there is no hope the specialist there are all kinds of specialists neurologist oncologist all all lodges now let the the doctor who specializes in impossible will step in I love when everything looks helpless when everything looks hopeless because you know what now Jesus can walk into the room hallelujah the scorners and the mockers can be kicked out oh yes you need to give room the damsel is sleeping hallelujah let me wake her up oh master that one was dead for four days why you're going no 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 I'm going to raise him hallelujah oh really yes because the one who spoke let there be the world was you know for a moment after you read that word in Genesis let there be go out there and look at the world oh my goodness Jesus you spoke this world and this world came into being yeah that's the Bible we need to read my brother that's how the revelation happens oh my goodness the world has not seen what God can do through you and me oh those who know their God shall do great exploits not the knowledge up here but the knowledge inside which becomes like a revelation hallelujah this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached how can you enter into this in, into this kingdom if anybody hearing tonight if you don't know Jesus I have to make it absolutely candid over here if you don't place trust in Jesus Christ which means he's the Lord of your life which means he guides your life which means he's the boss of your life which means now this life is not your life it is his he owns it if you have not made that decision I'm sorry to say with all love and sincerity you're heading towards an eternal destruction where there is no end hallelujah where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth 11 people in India committed suicide on July 1 and I started weeping oh my goodness Lord Jesus they did not know you Lord 
the Lord said, I want you to grieve because you know what? Then only, oh, my church will move and start praying for the lost. Hallelujah. We are only grieving for our little, little things of this world. Don't worry. You know, that is the heathens are worrying. The people of this world worry about what we shall eat, what we shall drink. That's the world's problem. You know, you are so precious. You are my kids. You are my children. You know, we have our children. You know, we being limited. We being, uh, you know, limited by all our resources, still we care for them. And our life is so uncertain. Think about the Heavenly Father, how much He cares. Church, if anybody in this room does not know Jesus, you need to receive Him as your Lord. That means He's the master of your life. Savior, ask for forgiveness. I am a sinner. It's simple. You don't have to do anything special. Jesus, come into my life. Please come into my life. Hallelujah. Except a man be born again. A new birth, not to be born into the mother's womb, but no. Nicodemus asked that, how this can be. That's how you enter into this kingdom. This kingdom is a glorious kingdom. I want to tell you something over here. Everything that is written in this Bible will come to pass. Whether you believe it or not believe it, that's okay. You don't believe it. It is, uh, you know, we, I, I as a pastor, I as a minister of the gospel, I have done my job. It is up to you. If you don't believe, I, I mean, nobody can force somebody to believe. You all have the free will. But I want to tell you one thing. The day is coming. Oh, a day of reckoning is coming. It's a very serious day. Oh, those who do not have, those who have all the mark of the beast, those who have not received the blood of the, who have not received the Lamb of God as their Savior, are going to be thrown into the lake of fire with Satan and the Antichrist. But for those who believe, there is something glorious. I know this life, let us not put our, fixate our life on these things of this world. God will take care of us, but keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't put your focus on this world. God will take care of it looking unto Jesus. You know, when Paul writes to Colossians, set your eyes on things of above. Oh, where Christ has been seated. Towards the end, I just want to, you know, give you this description of this kingdom. This is going to be a glorious kingdom. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of the heaven. And there is another place it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God with men. It gets so glorious. As you read the book of Revelation, and he showed me a pure river, a water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God. And in the midst of it, the street of it, on either side the river was, there was tree of life and twelve manners of fruit. You know, this is all about, it's a glorious kingdom. Jesus is coming back soon. See, the witch is, Jesus is seated, seated on the Mount of Olives where his feet is going to come once again and there's going to become a big valley the megiddo valley where in, in the battle of armageddon is where satan is antichrist and all his armies are going to gather against the lord hallelujah and with his mouth from his mouth shall go a sword and destroy the enemy church friends over here some of you who do not know jesus i want to tell you don't miss this opportunity tomorrow is not ours Today is in our hands. Somebody watching on the video, I want to tell you. You can debate it. You can deny it. But this is the truth. This is the truth. And this is not going to change. That's why this gospel, that is why this gospel is powerful. Everybody has tried everything to shut down. People have said, oh, Christianity will be wiped out. Everybody tried everything. No, it is not shutting down. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's like a mighty force. It will bulldoze everything that comes its way. Because you know why? This is... The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It is uh, the love and the power of God in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. An unstoppable force. Hallelujah. And uh, behold, I am coming quickly. Jesus is coming back very, very soon. If his, if the, if his first coming fulfillments happen, word to the dot, to the tittle, be assured he's coming back. Be ready. Go out there. Tell the truth. Don't even, don't even worry about how people think about you. Master did not get a great reception. We may not get, 
people may dislike amen to it hallelujah oh fulfill the lord's call upon your life thank you jesus is coming back soon don't miss this opportunity if brother praveen could come you know we could sing that chorus you know tonight anybody in this room has not made this commitment make this commitment tonight the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached then the end is going to come this world is going to be judged by fire don't think that you are going to we are going to make a tabernacle in this place this is going to end hallelujah this is the truth this is the truth and undeniably true thank you jesus hallelujah as we are singing this chorus from this hymn for a moment lord i'm sorry i'm not being being a bit light into this world lord i want to seek the things of this say things of the kingdom praise the gospel Rejoicing that will be, that will be when we all see Jesus. Sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, yes, that will be when we all. Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Before we close in prayer, anybody in this room has not made that decision, or anybody watching on the internet, my dear friend, Jesus is coming back soon. Why be in a place of double mindedness? Make that decision tonight. Today is ours. We don't know about tomorrow. This moment is yours. We shall be with him forever and ever. And I'm also giving a challenge to everybody in this room. Pray from tonight, Lord, help me be a witness in this world. Lord, I don't know how to do it. And I have to honestly confess tonight, I, I was very coward to share the gospel. I used to fear. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you. The Lord said, if you will not confess me before men, I will not confess you before my father. I said, all right, Lord, I will try. I don't know how to do it. I started committing my life. And whenever God gives me an opportunity, I always share. Don't hesitate. Don't be ashamed of my witness and of my Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said to Timothy. Make it a challenge when you go from here. Go and share to that colleague in your, in your workplace. Pray for them. Jesus will start doing miraculous things. You don't have to be a healing evangelist or anything. No. The power of God is inside of you. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. When you pray, yes. Not when a healing evangelist or somebody. Yes, you are. You have the power. Hallelujah. In this treasure, in this vessel. Hallelujah. Who knows? When they get set free, they will say, who is this Jesus? We want to also follow. Hallelujah. Please don't let somebody from coming to know the Lord. Don't stop them. Don't stop them. Anybody in this room needs any miracle, any prayer need in this room? Just raise your right hand wherever you are. 
want to just pray for you any impossible situation hallelujah any impossible situation hallelujah lord is going to do it sister for you hallelujah anybody anybody anything maybe for your friend many maybe for somebody yes the lord is going to touch hallelujah oh yes 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 god is beginning to do it this gospel will manifest with signs hallelujah lord i pray for this beloved ones hallelujah they are asking for prayer tonight in the name of jesus you know it you know it jesus hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah start declaring it wherever you are it will come to pass whether it is a sickness whether it is a financial situation whether it is a visa situation whether it is a relationship situation whatever it is in the name of jesus hallelujah i am the god of all flesh is there anything to hard for me and miracles will manifest hallelujah go home and write down that that situation you are praying in the name of jesus right granted and approved and sign your name you shall see the miracle i'm putting a challenge on you the next time the lord enables me to come if he's coming tarries you will start seeing those miracles go home and write down what's the problem and write down underneath i decree and declare in the name of jesus it is granted and approved some months back the lord told me to start doing that hallelujah make it as a witness you shall see the glory of god father i pray your blessing upon this people lord your protection upon your children oh god may they walk in their ways hallelujah in the ways of your word hallelujah let them be the light of the god's light of the light light to the world hallelujah let the gospel of the kingdom be preached through their mouths and many be brought to the knowledge of christ lord even through this video cameras lord hallelujah Thank you, Lord, for Lord choosing me, an unworthy vessel like me. Lord, I am not worthy to stand here and preach the gospel. Lord, you chose me, Lord. Thank you, Master. May, may I be of a service all the days of my life, Lord. Lord, no other desire but to preach the gospel. None of these things move me. Oh, neither do I count my life dear. All I desire is to preach the, preach the gospel. And to finish the course, as Apostle Paul said, may be our prayer. Bless everyone in Jesus' name.